So as many of you know, Fox News has become so obsessed with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez that they have resorted to creeping on her Instagram account in order to find content to attack her for. Now, their obsession has officially reached a really pathetic level because now they are propping up the right-wing version of AOC. And if you didn't know that that was a thing, yes, I'm here to tell you it is, in fact, a thing. There is a young Latino woman who is running for Congress who claims she is the antithesis of AOC's progressive policies. The only problem with the right-wing version of AOC is that she kind of sucks. And in an interview with Stuart Varney, you're going to see how unimpressed even he is. And I enjoyed every second of this because, you know, after months now of lambasting AOC, claiming that she's brain dead, she's a dunce, um, the right wing version of AOC has absolutely no substance whatsoever. Take a look. Our next guest, here she comes. She bills herself as the anti-AOC. She's running for Congress in Illinois. She is a Republican, and she's only 26 years old. If elected, she would be the youngest person ever elected to Congress. Catalina Lauf is with us on your screens now. Welcome to the show, Catalina. Good to see you. Hi, Stuart. Thanks so much for having me. You bill yourself as the anti-AOC candidate. So if you're anti-AOC, <laughs> what are you in favor of? What do you stand for? You know, Stuart, I'm not anti-anyone. I'm pro-America. And if there's contrast there, it's that I'm fiercely driven by a love for my country, not everything. I'm not driven by a hate for everything that it stands for like somebody like AOC and the rest of her friends okay. on the other side. What kind of policies do you, do you, do you favor? Sure. So I'm a huge free market uh, conservative. I think that we should have a uh, free market principles. The socialism rhetoric on the other side is so detrimental and so un-American that we need to get back to a framework where we are respecting where our Constitution stands and allowing individual and personal responsibility. Okay. Most young people that I know of your age are very much climate people. They want a climate plan. How do you, where do you stand on climate change? Sure. You know, I think we need to talk more on the economy and in a, in a broader sense. I think climate change should be addressed, but the, the policies that the other side are trying to implement uh, are completely ludicrous. I mean, think about the, the amount of money that they want to spend on, uh, on that, and it just doesn't make sense. There are other policies that are way more paramount and important, and I think that millennials need to recognize that. Now, you are the daughter, I believe, of a legal immigrant. Uh, I think that's yes. accurate in saying that. Okay. Now, w where do you stand on this whole immigration issue? Because if, if someone like me said, look, I want something done about the 11 to 15 million illegals living in this country, I'm branded as a sure. racist pretty fast. How about you? Where do you stand on this? No, the racism talk has got to end, you know, because we want safe and secure borders and because there should be a process and we should promote legal immigration. How is that illogical to ask? My, my mother, my family came here uh, in a way that was respecting the laws. And I think a lot of Hispanic Americans agree who have also respected the laws. That was uh, that was amazing. If you're the anti-AOC, what do you stand for? Uh, you know, Stuart, I'm not anti-anyone. I'm pro-America. And if there's contrast there, it's that I'm fiercely driven by a love for my country. I'm not driven by a hate of everything that it stands for. So let me remind you, he asked her what she stands for, and her answer can be reduced down to, I'm pro-America. Okay, great, you know, when we ask where a politician stands, you know, nine times out of ten, we're trying to figure out where they stand with regard to policy, but I'm glad that you're pro-America. I'd kind of expect you to be pro-America if you're running for Congress, but nonetheless, Stewart followed up and said, okay, but what policies do you stand for? She then said, I'm a huge free market conservative. I think 
that we should have a free market, free market principles. The socialism rhetoric on the other side is so detrimental and so un-American, and we need to get back to a framework where we are respecting where our constitution stands and allowing individual and personal responsibility. I mean, I don't know what that means. These are conservative buzzwords that she got from a word cloud. I mean, when you say that you are a free market conservative, that doesn't tell me anything about your policy positions. You are stating your political ideology. But if you are a free market conservative, what specific policy proposals would you implement that would complement your free market ideas? I mean, for example, do you think that a particular regulation or tax hinders the free market from flourishing in your district? What does getting back to a framework where we respect our constitution look like in practice? What does that even mean? If you're going to criticize AOC, Fox, and say that she's dumb, then maybe don't prop up someone who's clearly not ready for prime time yet and say, hey guys, we've got the anti-AOC here, you should support her. But definitely not the real AOC because she's stupid, she's dumb. Now, when it comes to climate change, St uh, Stuart Varney asked, what do you think about this issue? And she said, I think climate change should be addressed, but I think the policies the other side are trying to implement are completely ludicrous. I mean, think about the amount of money they want to spend on that. It just doesn't make sense. Okay, great. So you seemingly believe in climate change. That's better than I would have expected. However, you're a Republican. So first of all, if you believe in climate change, then one, what policy do you want to implement to address climate change? And two, how are you going to convince your fossil fuel funded colleagues in the Republican Party to implement the policy that you want, given it actually is one that is good and sufficient? What are you going to do? I mean, if you truly care about climate change and you think that it should be addressed, then you're running in the wrong party. Kind of an important issue, don't you think? Uh, additionally, towards the end, Stuart Varney revealed why he brought her on and why he decided to prop up someone who clearly doesn't really know anything about politics. He wants a brown girl to shield him from criticism after his network, himself, and the president continues to fearmonger about people moving here after our drug war and military interventions destroyed their country. So when he says, you know, I don't like mass immigration she can shield him from the claim that he is racist. And like the useful idiot that she is, of course she did exactly what he wanted. The only reason why she's there, the only reason why Fox News ever brings on members from marginalized communities when the Republican Party absolutely doesn't just not want to represent them, but actually doesn't like them, clearly, as demonstrated by their actions, uh, they bring them on because they want you to throw your community under the bus. And she did just that. And if you truly were only you know, uh, against illegal immigration and you were pro-legal immigration, what did you have to say when Donald Trump made it more difficult for people to seek asylum at legal ports of entry? Because that is a legal form of immigration. If you get asylum here, you could one day be a citizen. So why didn't you say anything about that? Do you not have any criticism for Donald Trump? It's a joke. And since this segment was so awful at showcasing who this individual is as a politician, I decided to take the liberty to look her up. So I went to her website and I wasn't expecting much, but I was genuinely shocked by the lack of substance. There was nothing here. She literally doesn't even have an issues page. There's basically nothing here. Just a picture of her with an old dude in a mega hat and that's it. So she is quite literally running as the anti-AOC and she has no policies to rebut what AOC is proposing. Here's how you effectively run an anti-AOC campaign. Oh, well, she supports student loan debt cancellation. Well, I support canceling 5%. She supports Medicare for all. Well, I support an add-on to the Affordable Care Act or I support my own right-wing equivalent. But she has nothing. And when I looked at her campaign video, there were a lot of things to me that seemed pretty familiar. She's straight up just ripping off AOC's campaign. Someone like me doesn't fit the mold. Women like me aren't supposed to run for office. My father is a small business owner who worked hard all of his life providing first family. My mother is a legal immigrant from Guatemala. 
mother from Puerto Rico, dad from the South Bronx. I've gone from working at a startup to working for President Donald Trump. I'm an educator, an organizer, a working class New Yorker. They forget what makes America great is all of us coming together. A New York for the many is possible. It's time for all of us to stand up and fight for the future of the American dream. Yeah, uncanny. So this is embarrassing. Her entire campaign is based on her being a copy of AOC, but on the right wing. To run a campaign where you are copying someone and clout chasing, that isn't a way to actually get elected. That's just embarrassing. You don't stand for anything. You're hollow. You're vacuous. Why are you running? You're running just so you can be a young lawmaker who is the answer on the right to AOC. I mean, put up some fucking policies. Just pick maybe one policy. Even if you pick the dumbest policy and you run on the wall, it's a policy at least. You can say that you're running for some particular reason, that you're going to get there and do more than just warm the fucking seat. But why are you running? And I don't want to be too hard on her because she's young and, you know, it's hard to run for Congress, right? You're under scrutiny and whatnot. But I mean, if you are going to run for Congress, that is a tremendous responsibility if you are in fact elected and to not bring anything to the table is downright embarrassing. You should be ashamed of yourself that you think you're qualified to run for Congress when you literally can't name a single policy proposal on Fox News, like he was handling you with kid gloves and you still fumbled that interview shameful now that's not to say that she's different than any other republican they all are vacuous but i mean if you're at least somewhat politically savvy you're gonna name one stupid ass right-wing policy she can't even do that she just is thinking that she's going to win by coasting on aoc's name recognition and uh clout chasing <sighs> i mean maybe it'll work because it's the republican party but um it's still not something that you should be too proud of you could support the humanist report at patreon.com slash humanist report but trust me i'd have way more supporters on patreon if that was my podcast sad <laughs>